In this video, I'm going to show you how to get in television games up and running on your Nintendo Wii U using RetroArch. I don't have nostalgia for Intellivision like a lot of other people in my age group. I didn't have the system growing up, my parents didn't have the system. But that doesn't mean I didn't play in television games, as there were a number of flashback collections that I picked up over the years, from original Xbox to the modern day. Unfortunately, in television games never made the cut for the Wii or Wii U virtual consoles, so for those of you out there that want to play these games on your system, you are going to need to resort to emulation with programs like RetroArch, and I'm going to show you how to get that set up today, so let's dive in. To get started with Intellivision emulation, we need Intellivision games. And the easiest way to get them is through the Intellivision Lives collection on PC or console. The console version requires a little bit more technical know-how, but the games are just stored as ROMs on the PC version, but if you have the console version, you can still get them. You just have to extract some files with some obscure programs, and you can still get them. So it works out okay. But this gives you access to 50 games really easily if you happen to own this collection already. Alternatively, if you own a big physical collection, you can get a hardware dumper or, you know, always resort to the shady parts of the net. Regardless of how you get them, though, we need to put them on our Wii U SD cards. So I made a folder in mine named RetroArch ROMs, which I'm storing all of my games for this tutorial series. So I'm just going to add my Intellivision games to it. Now that I have my games placed, I'm just going to go back up to the root of my SD card real quick because there are two more files we need to place, which are Intellivision BIOS files, and that is the exec.bin and grom.bin. These can also be obtained through the Intellivision Lives collection on PC or console. Again, console version is a little bit harder, so if you can track down that PC version, you are gold. But once you have these sourced, they do need to be named exec.bin and grom.bin. We just need to add them to our RetroArch system folder. So on the Wii U, that is in the folder RetroArch, Cores, and System. And we just need to put them in. There we go. Done. And once you have those files and games placed, we can close out of the SD card on our computer, take it out, and put it back in our Wii U and get it booted up. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for initial Wii U RetroArch install setup and settings that we use during this video. I also go over how to install this forwarder channel that you see here on my Wii U home screen. Anyway, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch. You can do this through the Homebrew Launcher or a forwarder channel. Now that RetroArch is booted, we're free to begin loading up our Intellivision games. To do this, go down to Load Core, press A, and then press right on your D-pad to go down to Mattel and load up Intellivision. Free Intellivision. And once the core is loaded, go down to Load Content and navigate to where you have your Intellivision games stored. So for me, it's on the SD card, RetroArch ROMs folder, Intellivision games folder. And then I could select a game, press A on it, and it will run. This method is really slow though, so what I prefer to do instead is make a games playlist. So backing out to the main menu of RetroArch, we could go to the left here and go down to Import Content. And from here, go to Manual Scan, Content Directory, choose the folder where you have your Intellivision games stored again, so Intellivision games, and then hit Scan this directory. System name, we're going to go right on the D-pad until we find Mattel in television. And then default core, same thing. Press right until you find Mattel and select in television. Now, if you have your game separated into subfolders, make sure scan recursively is still on. And if you have them zipped, make sure you turn scan inside archives on. But once you have these options set, you can go ahead and start the scan. And once the scan's complete, you'll have a new Intellivision playlist entry down here on the bottom left. There it is. Now to play Intellivision games from your playlist, all you need to do is select a game, and press A, and press A again to run it. And there we go, and television games up and running on the Nintendo Wii U. This is amazing. Now, when you first start playing in television games on the Wii U, it can be a little confusing at first because the Wii U gamepad is obviously a little bit different than in a television nine-button circular pad thing. But it's actually uh, 
intuitive, all things considered. They made free and television really well. So when you first start playing, you can press start on your gamepad and then press A and it'll bring up a nice help menu to show you what all of the controls are. So pressing A, B, or Y will activate three of the Intellivision's buttons, their action buttons. And then of course the Intellivision had the uh, 10 keypad as well and you could bring that up using the L or R buttons. If I press L or R, it brings up that virtual keypad, and then we could select a number with the D-pad. And whatever the number we selected last, we can then use with the X button on the gamepad. It's really convenient, especially for games that would require button presses quite frequently. But yeah, so you could do that as well. And then there were also other Intellivision games that would run on either the left or right port. You could select what port you're using just by pressing the select button. So now I can't move, but if I press select again, I can move. So... Some games you might not be able to move at first, just press select and you should be able to. But then when you're starting up a game, it might ask you if you want to have one or two players. So you could do this by pressing the L button and then just selecting the number and then go down to E to enter it. So again, free and television is actually really intuitive considering that you don't have that nine button keypad anymore. But I think that's pretty much going to cover the basics on how to actually get your Intellivision games up and running once you have the games and BIOS files placed on your Wii U SD card. Again, the Intellivision emulation is really intuitive. There's really not a whole lot you need to do after you get that initial setup done. It's all handled within the emulator itself. It's pretty nice. There aren't even any advanced core options for this one, so it's pretty straightforward and simple. Now, normally in this part of the video, I'd start talking about shaders, but Wii U shaders are a bit strange, so I'm going to make a dedicated Wii U shader video once we finish this series of core videos, so stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it for Intellivision emulation. Once you have your games and BIOS files placed, you're ready to start playing, and Free Intellivision makes it really simple to do, honestly. Like, that, that keypad integration, the quick ability to swap between left or right controls, like, it's a really well done emulator, and I think it's just absolutely fantastic. Fans of Intellivision should be really happy with this one. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I really can't thank you all enough for helping this channel continue to grow, and it really means a lot to us. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live, plus a bunch of others. Really helps continue the growth of the channel, and again, we are so grateful to all of you for that. If you're feeling extra generous and want to help support the channel further, you can always check out that join button here on YouTube, or click on that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place running, and we are so grateful to each and every one of you for that. Thank you to all the current champions who have been with us for so long and are keeping this place going. You are all freaking rock stars. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.